Hi, I'm Jessie Page, and this is a story of the time I had a ball in Austria. Last summer, I went to Vienna and I went to this LGBTQ plus event. It's called Life Ball. It's an event for the LGBTQ plus community that brings HIV awareness. It's a super glamorous event and everyone wears these like big ball gowns and gets super dressed up. So every year there's a theme and this year was Wizard of Oz and um, every color was a different part of the community. So I was a person from Emerald City and I wore green and all the bisexuals also wore green. For the after party, the green dress like kind and, uh, made me look like Shrek, so I decided to change into this dark blue moon dress with all these stars on it, matched my hair. And to top it all off, I had a huge rainbow flag painted in between my boobs. So the year before, I was like super nervous to go out and mingle at the party. I just wanted to be in my hotel room and wanted to be in bed, and I feel like I, I just missed out on the after party and all of its glory. So this year, I decided to go out of my comfort zone and I, I had this goal to kiss at least one person at the after party. I thought this might be one of the last opportunities I have to go, so I was like, why not go all out? I had a wingman with me. It was my friend Gabe. He was wearing super, super, super tight pants and very, very strapping in makeup. And I forgot to mention, he was rocking purple hair and I have blue hair. So we basically looked like an anime duo. We also had a tour guide with us. His name is Charlie. He also spoke Austrian, so he helped translate for us. So Gabe and I made a plan for how I was gonna get my kiss. He had a whole process. During the first hour, we make laps around the venue. We make eye contact contact with people and see who also makes eye contact with you and assess your options. Then during the second hour when people were a little more tipsy, we'd approach people and flirt. So we start making our rounds and Gabe informs me that this tall, very European, um, blue-eyed, blonde hair, tan man has um, been looking at me. I looked over and he was gorgeous and he was making eyes with me but we lost him on the second lap. We decided to call him Mystery Man. We kept making laps and looking around at people and I kept looking for Mystery Man. Then Gabe finally says, it's time to start making moves. I started getting nervous thinking about how I was gonna kiss someone by the end of the night. I was trying to decide who to talk to first, but before I could, someone came up to talk to me. Huh? Actually, it was two people. They came up to talk to our tour guide, Charlie, to figure out how to talk to us. They were a DJ duo from Austria, and they both thought I was attractive. They were wearing matching white track suits with the name of whatever their band was on the back of it. They told Charlie, our tour guide, that they wanted to hang out and get to know me. The whole time, they were making like little kissy faces at me and winking the whole nine yards. I was flattered, but I ended up just kind of politely bowing out of the conversation. <laughs> I wasn't really feeling it, and they were also just kind of, I don't know, not my type. Then, from across the room, I saw this really pretty girl with long red hair and a beige tracksuit. I hadn't seen her on any of her earlier laps, and I swear, I think she was an angel. She was way too pretty. She had a group of friends with her, and it made approaching her even more intimidating. But I mustered up my courage, and I walked up to her and tried to start a conversation. <laughs> she got this confused look in her face, and I was like, oh no, I'm already embarrassing myself. This was not a good idea. But then I realized she just looks confused because she doesn't speak English. So, I sent in Charlie to talk to her for me. Then Charlie walks back over and I'm like, oh no, she's not that into me. And then Charlie says, she's straight. So I was like, oh, okay, at least that's a softer rejection than if she was gay and just wasn't into me. So far, it wasn't looking great to get my kiss. And Mystery Man was still nowhere in sight. So we make another lap or two and I'm just feeling <sighs> exhausted and rejected. At this point, I was so tired and over making laps and making eyes at people, but I also wanted to achieve my goal of getting a kiss. So I just decided to go for it. I beckoned the DJ boys over and they just came right up to huh? me. And I asked one of them if they <laughs> want to kiss me. Without hesitating, he jumps right in. Right after we kissed, he was like, wow, that was amazing. But I have a girlfriend, I, I hope that does it you know, change anything. So I tell him, it's a uh -oh. problem. And I grab Gabe and we get out of there. We say goodnight to Charlie and we go to our hotel room. 
right as we're heading out, I see him. Mystery man. I'm thinking, oh my god, this is faith. It's all happening. I lock eyes with him, and I, I think he's looking at me, but I realize he's locking eyes with someone directly behind me. I turn around, and it's the girl with the long red hair. She walks over to him and puts her arms around him, and they kiss. Gabe and I look at each other, and we just die laughing. <laughs> Then we just went to our hotel and watched TV and ordered room service. To be honest, that was the best part of the night and what we should have done from the beginning. So I guess the moral of the story is don't go out and do things. Stay in and watch movies with your friends. To check out more stories, be sure to click here and do not forget to subscribe to MTV.